Hey guys, Chad here. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Chronicles of a Farm Safe Startup here at the Hidden Spring Farm. Oh, but I thought I'd do something a bit different today and give you guys the lowdown of what my plans are for this year, 2021. I got huge plans for the farm. Huge plans. I'm talking sunflower fields, orchard plantings, duck ponds, chicken coop, more animals to the farm. Oh man, it's gonna be good. So today, this episode is all about the 15 projects that I hope to get done this year at the Hidden Spring Farm. 15 projects. 15. It might be a lot to take on, but I've never been one to back down from a challenge. Oh man, it is a little bit of a dreary day here. Um, no sun, no warmth, but uh, it's a good day I think for me to give you guys a little bit of excitement and anticipation on what's going to be coming up here at the farm. So remember to click that subscribe people. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Click that like, share it to your friends. I don't mind. I really appreciate the help. We need all the help we can get to grow our channel. Really appreciate it. Thank you. These projects are in absolute no order of priority. I'm just giving you 15 projects. Number one is replacing this chicken coop. This right here was existing on the property. I consider it the saddest looking chicken coop in Canada. It is quite tired. The wood is rotting. It needs help. I am going to demolish this and I'm going to reclaim a lot of the wood, whatever I can. And I'm going to lay out a footprint for a new coop. This, the, the new coop is going to start right here where the run is. And then there's going to be a building and then the run is going to continue up into the trees. It's going to be sick. I have a design in my head, guys. I don't work from blueprints. I just have a vision as to what I want. And I've looked at other YouTube channels to see what is good amenities to include in a chicken coop. And I'm going to go from there. So yeah, it's going to have a coop and a run. And it's going to have a couple separate cells. I call them cells. Sections where I can quarantine a rooster if I want to. Whenever I want to hatch eggs, obviously, you're going to have to quarantine some roosters. Because I don't want to have mixed breeding. I want to deal only in purebred birds. It's going to have wicked awesome roosts. It's going to be all ventilated properly so there's no moisture buildup. It's going to have these wicked awesome nesting boxes that I have access to on the outside. It's going to have like a side clean out door that I can just so I can just shovel out all the sh all the stuff and all the debris and get it out. I'm thinking it's going to have a rainwater collection system with some rain barrels. Oh, it's going to be nice. All the rain's just going to flow off the gutters, boom, into the rain collection, boom, into the waterer for the chickens. I don't even have to fill up the water, hopefully. So I think it's going to be awesome. This uh, chicken coop's got to go. I already have my custom ultimate duck house. Now I need a custom ultimate chicken coop. And that's uh, on my list for 2021. Project number two is a Russian mammoth sunflower field. This whole little fenced in section here, it's 36 feet by 36 feet. It's a square. The barn is over there. And this is going to be 10 foot tall Russian mammoth sunflowers. You know sunflowers folks, those big huge yellow flowers with the black centers and you can harvest sunflowers out of them. I'm not going to be using any machinery to plant this sunflower field. I'm just going to be using a hoe, maybe a Dutch hoe or something to make like a line. I'm going to estimate lines. I'm not going to make it so perfect but uh, I think it's going to be really cool for our guests in the farm stay. You can take photos here. It's really Instagrammable. It's gonna be amazing. Can you imagine where I'm standing right now? Just picture it, people. Where I'm standing right now, behind me, was giant sunflowers. That's gonna be so awesome. 
I've never planted sunflowers before, so it's gonna be a first for me. It also, it's gonna bring us a little bit closer to self-sustainability because guess what guys sunflowers is food i like sunflowers slightly salted and roasted in the oven the ducks like sunflowers who doesn't like sunflowers so i'm purchasing sunflower seeds right now for my ducks can you imagine if i have a whole ton of sunflower seeds that i can grow myself so not only is it adding value to the farm People can take photos, they're interested. It's an Instagrammable moment for the farm stay. It's great for marketing, but it'll save us on having to buy food all throughout the year. Um, so this is 36 by 36, like I said. That's a lot of sunflowers just for our little farm. So I can't wait. Third project is blueberries. I wanna plant some blueberries. I got a spot all picked out here. It gets full sun. It's separate from our future vegetable garden and our orchard because blueberries, from what I understand, need very acidic soil. So it's gonna be this whole section right here, all along this fence right here. I figure I'm gonna do two rows of 20 bushes each. So that's gonna give us 40 bushes. I don't yet know what variety of blueberry. I still need to uh, do a little bit of research and study that for uh, our Ontario climate. But uh, I'm really looking forward to it. My wife and I really like blueberries. I mean, who doesn't, I mean, gosh, I, 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 I'm so excited about having to grow my own food. This is so cool, but uh, it's a little bit of an investment. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work right here would probably get my farm tractor and just dig it all up and then start fresh because there's a bunch of old shrubs right here I don't even know what they are I think it's just weeds but that's gonna be pretty cool okay let's go on to the next project project number four number four Bobby Oa if you guys watched a few videos ago I showed you how I was using my tiller to prep for this coming year's massive ultimate vegetable garden and it's gonna be quite massive. It extends all the way down there, really. It extends all the way down there. It's like 100 feet. I'm gonna to have to come up with fencing for it because we need to protect ourselves against deer and those pesky squirrels. The squirrels, Arr! I'll have to figure those out. I'm thinking four or five foot tall fencing, maybe just like rabbit fencing, and then some hot wires across the top. That'll keep the squirrels from climbing over. They'll get zapped and just whoo, and they'll fly right off, hopefully. My wife and I are gonna start sowing some seeds indoors. Uh, I'm gonna have to get some kind of a shelf and rig up some kind of grow light system. We're gonna do that here in the farmhouse. And uh, that's gonna be pretty cool. I already have all my seeds ordered. I'm gonna build this huge, massive front gate to this vegetable garden. I want people to know that, hey, there's the front gate so it's going to be so cool i have an idea of a design this vegetable garden is going to be able to grow thousands of vegetables and we're going to be planting all sorts of vegetables i can't even remember all the different seeds that i ordered we're talking corn peas beans pumpkin what else radish celery broccoli onions eggplant what else long beans snap peas snow peas what else beets potatoes like the list just goes on this is going to be such a huge project for us and i'm so excited to be able to grow our own food we're going to have our own personal grocery aisle right here guys and how much vegetables are we going to use feeding our animals too, especially like chickens? They love the vegetables. Love! So I'm super excited about this vegetable garden project. I'm out here in our mini orchard, guys. I'm standing here right next to one of our probably 50-year-old antique apple trees. But this year, I am planning to add on a bunch more trees, okay? We only have one peach, so I want to do a few, couple more peaches couple more plums my wife really likes nectarine you like nectarines guys i don't particularly care for nectarines but my wife loves them and you know how it goes happy wife happy life 
So we're gonna get some nectarines. I'm hoping to find myself some kind of edible chestnut. We have a horse chestnut here close to the farmhouse, but it's not edible. It's not really good for nothing. So I need like a, like an American chestnut or a Chinese chestnut. Those are edible sweet chestnuts. And it's not easy to find that. I might have to order a, a bare root style as opposed to an actual tree. And I'm looking to get some walnut. More than likely it'll be black walnut. I'm only looking to get like a couple trees, not nothing huge. But uh, I thought it's gonna be really cool to add on to our orchard this year. Next project on the list guys is right here. I'm hoping that I can do it this year. I hope that I can afford it. Sorry guys, Molly's humping my leg right now. You can't see it, but she's doing it. Molly, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm hoping I'll be able to... <laughs> Molly's humping my leg again. Molly, get off my leg. I'm trying to YouTube here. Sorry guys. Yeah, so anyways, I'm thinking it's a little bit of a slant. I'm gonna need a retaining wall all along the back. There's gonna be waterfalls cascading over the top of that retaining wall. I'm thinking like one of those old school windmills, you know, to get the pump going so that the waterfalls will function and just cycle the water through. Fishing, boating, ice skating, hockey, ice fishing, canoeing. You could do any one of those things on this pond because it's a good sized pond. Maybe it's like one acre. Bentonite, you're gonna have to coat the bottom of this pond with about 12 inch thick of bentonite. It's like blue clay, it's really thick. Once you add that in, the water's not gonna loot, your water's not gonna seep through and go through the, the earth. It's gonna be stocked with fish native to Ontario, probably like a smallmouth bass or maybe a perch, maybe some bluegills you know, fish that are good eating anyway. And it's gonna be a huge farm stay attraction, huge. I mean, gazebo on the side, gardens walking all the way around, meandering around the pond, beautiful wildflowers and other roses and lilacs surrounding the pond. Can you envision this, folks? This is my vision. I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of my vision and I hope I'm succeeding, because man, the possibilities are endless. I just hope I can make it all happen. It might be the pond in one shot and then adding on to the, all the, the little amenities around the pond, that might be in coming years because it's gonna cost a lot of money to dig my kind of pond, especially with a retaining wall. I'll probably have to use armor stone or something. So that's not something I'll be able to do myself. That's hiring a contractor for that. Think about what that'll mean for the ducks. Oh man, I'm so winded. My legs are burning from just walking through the snow. I should have worn my snowshoes to come up here just to talk to you guys. Anyways, let me get to it quick because I got to head back down. At least it's downhill going back. Remember this? You might not recognize it in the winter, but this was the start of my trails in the woods that I started developing last fall. We have 15 acres of hardwood bush here on the farm and there's peaks and valleys and switchbacks and like all sorts of cool mountain talk that I don't even know anything about. But what I do know is I want trails. I want trails for myself to have fun. I want trails for the farm stay. It's another attraction. Hiking trails, boom. ATV trails, boom. Snowmobiling trails, boom. Mountain biking trails, boom. Snowshoeing, boom. Anyways, it's a lot of work to make trails in here. I may have to build some cool bridges because there's some deep valleys. So, I mean, I don't even know how I'm gonna build trails. I'll have to figure that out. I'm gonna take it step by step. I'm gonna take my time. So that's gonna be another project on the farm. This year is continuing with my trail development in the woods. Exciting. I'm standing here inside my duck house this is the next project on the list for 2021. You know what it is? Hatching my own birds. Yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty awesome if I will not have to buy my own chicks and ducks every few years. I wanna be able to hatch my own and move forward in that manner. Right in this section right here, I'm gonna make myself a little duckling brooder. I put electrical in there so it's easy to hang heat lamps down. The ducklings will be separate from the other birds. I don't have an incubator picked out yet. There's a few incubators on the market that I've been looking at, 
but uh, the one is uh, GQF Sportsman 1502. It's a nice refrigerator style, cabinet style incubator. The problem is it's 1500 Canadian dollars. I can't afford that. I'd rather spend my money on a pond. So I'm probably going to get one of those rinky dink little $200 incubators for the time being. It's the first time I'm ever going to be incubating eggs and hatching my own eggs. So, whoa, here come the ducks. Hey, ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that guys. Molly is just freaking out the ducks. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, expensive. So these these incubators can be quite expensive. I'm not a professional. I'm going to be doing this for the first time, incubating and hatching. So I'm just going to start small, get myself an incubator that's a couple hundred dollars and go from there. Yep. Another big project that I want to get done on the farm this year is a water hydrant expansion. So anybody who's been following my videos knows that over beside the barn down there, there's a hydrant that gives us water all throughout the year. It's a four season hydrant. Problem is I got my custom ultimate duck house here with no water and I have to trek my water over here. That's not real nice. It's a lot of hard work. So I'd like to have a hydrant. The hydrant is gonna be somewhere in this area right here and then boom, the hydrant. The good thing about that, folks, is if you look over here, this is where that massive ultimate vegetable garden is going to go. So guess what? We're going to need water for the massive ultimate vegetable garden. Otherwise, I'm going to have hoses running all over this place. It's going to look so ugly for the farm stay. Not very attractive to look at a bunch of hoses on the grass, and it's hard to mow the lawn. So that's going to be a little bit of an investment. I know that those things have to be dug down below the frost line and so that's like probably six to ten feet here in Ontario and it's probably a good 250-300 feet from where the other hydrant is. I'm assuming that's where the plumbers would tap into. That's not something I'll take on on my own. I'll be hiring that out. That's uh, a little bit over my pay grade. But uh, anyways, that's an exciting thing. Water. I'm standing in the middle of the future massive ultimate vegetable garden. And another thing that I'm gonna need to get done on the farm this year, somewhere over in this vicinity, I don't know exactly where, somewhere right here, I'm gonna have to build my darling a custom cute little garden shed. It's not gonna be just your kind of garden shed that you just go to Home Depot and buy a shed for a thousand dollars and put it on the ground. It's not gonna be like that at all because I like custom. I like my design. So I don't have a design yet. I'm keeping that a secret. I think eventually in the super long run, we're gonna have a greenhouse here on the farm. Um, I don't really wanna store a bunch of tools in the greenhouse. The greenhouse needs to use all the maximum space in there for whatever you're growing. So we definitely need some kind of a storage shed right here. It's gonna be my darling's cute little she shed garden shed gonna be good. Another thing I want to get done on the farm this year is research and purchase a bigger wood chipper slash shredder. Um, I don't know much about them. I do wish that there's some kind of a strong powerful shredder slash chipper. It'll do wood chips but it'll also shred leaves and shred branches. And remember this little pile that I had right here from when I rejuvenated the orchard last fall? I need to be able to chip that. I want to be able to create my own wood chips, um, especially I'm going to be building my own meandering kilometers and kilometers worth of trails in the woods. I think I need a proper wood chipper. I don't think I want a PTO wood chipper that attaches to the farm tractor because then anywhere you want to use it, you need the tractor. I don't really want that. I want something that I can attach to my mule. I can bring the wood chipper up in the woods if I have to and I can just leave it here if I have to. I did have my own wood chipper and it was just too small. The little opening only takes, you know, like three inch branches and it was just really a pain in the butt to have to prune off all of the side shoots. I just want something with a big opening that you can just cram all of the junk in and it'll just spit out all the wood chips. 
So they're probably a couple thousand dollars. I'll have to study and research what's the best one and to see what's available to us here in Ontario, Canada. Next project I want to get done on our farm this year is getting ourselves one or two piglets. Yes, I know. Piglets? How do you go from having chickens and ducks to piglets? I don't really want to raise pigs, but my darling, who is a Filipino, I love her to death. She's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life, and I'll do anything for her. She wants to do a lichon. Lichon is a Filipino style roast whole pig. And there's a special way you got to do it. It's very succulent. It's very delicious. Very delicious. It melts in your mouth. Melts in your mouth. And she's got some recipes all picked out. We have this old pen that we were raising our ducks in before I built my custom ultimate duck house. There's a little house there. You know, I, I feel like it's suitable for a pig or two. They're not very big. We're not gonna let them grow that big. But uh, I don't know anything about raising pigs. At the TSC store, I did see bags of swine feed. It's also gonna be another good attraction for the farm stay, you know? that uh, people can come and interact and take pictures and watch them from afar because pigs can be quite comical too just like ducks wouldn't you say anyway so i'm looking forward to that i don't know where i'm going to get pigs but uh, i'll have to see where you get livestock if there's auctions or if there's local farms that are selling some off so that'll be an interesting exercise for me to go through next project i want to get done is figuring out how can i free range my ducks in the mini orchard and I have pool tree fencing I have the you know the solar powered electrifier and so I'll need to figure that out and I need to learn how to trim the wings of the ducks so that they won't fly away on me because I kind of feel like they can fly away I've seen them flying inside their run and it's like whoa if they had enough space, I feel like they could fly. But I really want to free range them. I think it'll be really good for the ducks. Um, it will probably make them happier, probably affect the taste of the eggs and the taste of the meat. And uh, it's the right thing to do. That's the kind of farmer I want to be. I want the Hidden Spring Farm to treat their animals res with respect and give them the best possible life we can while we're being self-sustainable. And I'll probably have to start teaching them tu lo gana again. Tu lo gana means go to bed in Filipino. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to just say, tu lo gana ducks, tu lo gana, tu lo gana. So that they'll come back from the pond and go in, back into their house. I'll have to train them using food and it's probably gonna take months and months. I had started training them already when they lived in the uh, in the other pen but uh, it's gonna be interesting I can't wait another big thing I want to take on this year it's kind of big it's big for me is I want to get rabbits rabbits folks rabbits you know why I want rabbits poop <laughs> I want rabbits because of their poop the manure for rabbits is cold not hot most barnyard animals have hot manure and it needs to sit for months and months and months, possibly years, because it's hot manure and it needs to compost down before it gets cold, before you can actually use it. But rabbits have cold manure, so that means I can use their manure in our massive ultimate vegetable garden all the time. It's going to be so awesome. Another good thing that we can do with rabbits is that we have this nice little area right here with all these trees that's right beside the other pen where we're planning to keep the pigs and it's easy enough to make some fencing here and it gives them a lot of protection from the hawks a lot of aerial predation in this area of Ontario and I have to really be sure I mean nothing's gonna be hundred percent foolproof unless I completely net them in um, but that's going to be a lot of expense. I'm thinking, you know, rabbits like to dig and they like to burrow holes where they sleep and all that. So I'm sure they're, they can escape. There's all these trees around. Um, anyways, that's uh, going to be cool. Another good thing about rabbits, they just have sex all the time. I think they have like a 30 day gestation period. So immediately after a doe gives birth to some kits, 
it's like within 30 days, boom, they're having another, another pregnancy. They can just keep doing that as often as you want, I guess. It's pretty amazing, actually, how nature works with bunnies. But uh, you've heard about breeding like bunnies, you know, because they just have babies and babies and babies and babies. I'm thinking to get ourselves one buck and maybe three does just to start. I don't plan on keeping them in cages. I've seen a lot of rabbitries online on YouTube. There's a lot of YouTubers doing it too that are producing rabbits for meat. I don't want to produce rabbits for meat. But they keep them in these little two by two little cages and the rabbit can't even run around. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's not something that I want to do. I want to free range, free range meaning in whatever pen I build for them. It's not like they're out in a horse paddock or something because I can't have them escaping. But guess what, folks? People love bunnies. They're just so cute. Well, people who are staying in the farm stay can go inside, get a bunny, pick it up, pet it, play with the bunnies. The kids are gonna love it. Oh, it's just another attraction for the farm stay. We can produce our own kits. We can sell the bunnies. We can collect the manure. It's all a win-win. Last project, guys, is an axe throwing arena. Yep, that's what I said, an axe throwing arena. Very simple to build. It's just like an alleyway, really, with kind of a setup with a big bullseye and some side walls. And axe throwing, guys. Who wouldn't want to do axe throwing when you're staying at a farm stay vacation rental? Oh man, this place is going to be an adventure seeker's paradise by the time I'm finished. Not only you can do axe throwing in this arena, it can also be used for archery, you know, as an activity. It's something we can start offering experiences like guided snowshoe tours through the woods or, you know, archery lessons. You know, that would be pretty cool. Just another good way to supplement the income here on the farm. Even to just say, I have an axe throwing arena of my own. And guess what guys, I want to do axe throwing, I'll just do it in my spare time. Not that I ever have spare time here on the farm, but if I just want to throw a couple axes, boom, 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 throw, throw, throw. <laughs> I mean, it's... That about wraps it up guys. Thanks for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring. And I hope it kind of gives you a glimpse into what my vision and plans are for the farm. I feel like it's a lot to take on in one year. A lot. It comes down to it, some of those projects that I listed today will not be done by me. I'm going to have to hire them out. So I can still be working on something while the contractor is working on whatever project I assign them to. So I think it's all in good fun. I do think it's a lot to take on. I think the thing on that list that's going to take me the most amount of time is the custom ultimate chicken coop. It's probably going to take me like a couple of months working every day to build that coop. But I want my chickens to be living a good life and I can't wait to give them that good life. So I just want to thank everybody for sticking with me, watching this episode, and um, I think it's going to be a fun year. We got to get through this winter. Once spring comes, we're full throttle, full throttle. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a super amazing year for us on the farm. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Remember to subscribe. Remember to like the video if you do like it. And remember to share it because we need help to grow our channel. Help us out. Share it. Like it. Comment. Leave comments. I love it when you guys leave comments. I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next episode and we'll see you later.